enabling these webinars. Today, we are privileged to welcome Sri Ashok Kumar Singh, DGM Listing Compliances, BSE Limited. And we welcome you, sir. And before we start this session, we will have our institute's anthem. Asatu ma sad gamaya Tamhisu ma jyotir gamaya Mrityur ma amritam gamaya Asatu ma sad gamaya Tamhisu ma jyotir gamaya Mrityur ma amritam gamaya Asatu ma sad gamaya Tamasu ma jyotir gamaya Mrityur ma amritam gamaya Uh, now we request our uh, chairman, SSB board, CMA Dr. Ashish Thakte to give his opening remarks. So good evening to uh, all of you. And uh, uh, we are meeting after many days. I think this is eighth webinar uh, in the series and we met on the first and second webinar. Last few days, uh, I'm not able to come up uh, for some or other reason, traveling schedule, meeting schedule, etc. But today I'm here, and uh, you know I uh, I sincerely express my special thanks to Ranjit Krishnan sir, who is diligently doing this work of uh, having the Vasudeva Kutumbakam series. Uh, um, you know, two Fridays uh, in the month, uh, yeah, second and fourth Friday of the month. And uh, also, you will you have seen one change as previous as compared to the previous times is uh, there is new face uh, who is uh, anchoring the today's show, and that is uh, our own Dipendu Roy sir, uh, who is from Calcutta, and uh, he is our new SSB uh, secretary also. So I welcome him to uh, uh, you know SSB. We have welcomed him in the meeting also earlier. So welcome him to uh, Vasudeva Kutumbakam series as well. Uh, also, a very special thanks to uh, Ashok sir, uh, because uh, we met a few days back uh, at the SEBI office for uh, some work, uh, for some meeting we were there. And uh, that point in time, uh, our SSB uh, related group, whatever was there, the chairman has told Bombay Stock Exchange that they should uh, you know, come up with more uh, visibility of how uh, Bombay Stock Exchange is helping SSB to get registered on Bombay Stock Exchange. There are Many uh, social uh, organizations who are now registered with Bombay Stock Exchange as well as National Stock Exchange. I'm thankful to both the exchanges for doing the tremendous work uh, in this uh, in this um, uh, space of uh, social stock exchange. And uh, you know we are expecting to have a very good success of social stock exchange as a, a concept as a uh, you know, uh, as whatever we have been, uh, whatever has been expected by the ministry, whatever has been expected by the honorable finance minister, so that uh, this uh, so social establishments can get a lot of support from the, you, you know, all over the world uh, by way of institutional inv investors or even the retail investors. So today uh, we are here to listen more uh, from the Ashok sir uh, regarding social stock exchanges expert and uh, also representing Bombay Stock Exchange, who is uh, one of the exchanges wherein, uh, you know, SSBs, uh, uh, wherein uh, social uh, organizations uh, will get registered, listed, etc. over there. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Roy Sa, for uh, taking efforts to arrange 
today's webinar. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your opening remarks. Now we have our speaker, uh, Ashok Kumar Singh, sir, who is presently, he is actually DGM Listing Compliance of BAC Limited. To just read his short profile, he is a qualified chartered accountant, company secretary with bachelor's degree in science law. He is also a diploma in information system audit, and uh, he also has done postgraduate diploma in securities law from Mumbai. And his experience, if you see, he has 17 years of experience in Bombay Stock Exchange. He has experience in listing and related compliances, and also entire gamut of IPOs and QIPs, scheme of arrangement, debt listing, delisting, LODR compliances. He also leads his team, uh, which actually looks around equity debt securities, mutual funds, RET, invades, delisting. And he is also in the part of monitoring compliances with SEBI and LODR regulations. He has worked with SEBI and other stock exchange legal firms for compilation and drafting of new listing regulation, which is SEBI, LODR regulations, and several other pieces of legislations, to name a few RETs, as we have told, RETs, INVATES, LODR, NC, RPS. He is working with also SEBI in various committees. We welcome you, sir. And with this, uh, we hand over the session to our guest speakers. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Ranjit, sir, and the uh, Ashish, sir, uh, for inviting me. This is my first uh, interaction with CMA, uh, uh, though I am very regular with the ICSI. So, uh, like Asis sir mentioned, last week we had this meeting in SEBI. That was uh, then where I met Asis. This was uh, related to Social Stock Exchange uh, expert group, which is found by SEBI. How we have to work further on the making this noble initiative more successful. So that that background uh, we met, and uh, today we are together again here. So, uh, I mean, uh, I have prepared a small PPT, but uh, maybe we'll be speaking more freely than going by the slides specifically, which are there. So, Devendu sir, can you share the PPT? So, is it visible to everybody? Yes. So can it go to start, please? The first slide. Okay, okay. So, so social stock exchange. So this is uh, the journey started with the. Uh, you want to the next slide? The journey started uh, with the speech of Honorable uh, uh, Finance Minister. It is uh, sorry. Can you make it full screen? Because uh, I'm not able to see the content fully. I guess. This one is better. Can make it big. Just give me one minute. Huh? Yeah, one minute. So the, it, this is a very small font site, but anyway. So this started in uh, 2019 when the Honorable Prime Minister announced, uh, sorry, Honorable Finance Minister announced that they want to uh, bring uh, this uh, noble cause close to masses 
through stock exchanges mechanism and that time this was conceptualized because uh, presently we are donating money to the noble cause to npos to other entities which are registered uh, uh, with under the income tax in various form and we get atg benefits but this is still considered to be more in unstructured way because there is no specific uh, way of knowing that what happened to money that I have I have uh, donated for a noble cause. So and that was the reason that uh, internationally it was it was uh, it was stated that uh, until and unless there is a clear a clear uh, you know clear view on where the money is being used, where it is uh, going to be used and how much it has been used on a periodic basis, it will not bring confidence uh, to the market to participate and give money, whether domestic or international for the noble causes for which these NPOs, NGOs works. So with that concept, the concept came that this can be possible if regular and periodic updates are given to the investors on the on a platform and stock exchange was considered to be that platform because this is where the all other disclosure related to other kind of listed instrument are being given and most of the investing population is very familiar with the website of the stock exchanges. So with that they've started that OK, it should be in the form of a listed entity. Then uh, then the, then in order to you know actually implement the concept which was uh, shared by the finance minister. Uh, they formed an expert committee. Then expert committee submitted its report to government. Then government said uh, that there has to be a, a technical group. So they formed another technical group which has further elaborated. I have a, a small slide, one slide wherein I have covered the 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 very 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 brief form, all the recommendations which were given by expert committee and what additional value addition was done by the technical group. After the group uh, report of the technical group came out, then it was quite clear that how this entire structure of social stock exchange listing of the instrument will work out. Then we came into the picture when we say we means my, myself from BSC side and then we have people from NSC side. We closely work with the SEBI to conceptualize the actually how this listing will happen, how the fund will flow, how the post listing obligation should be framed. So we were instrumental in framing the ICDR regulation amendment, which provides for listing and the NLODR regulation amendment, which provides for post listing disclosure requirement and the, uh, the various operational parts. So with that background, we work together. Basically, the main uh, problem was that we donate fund to NPOs for the social cause. Of course, when we are donating money, we are not expecting any return either in the form of interest or in the form of principal. Now, in order to get something listed on the stock exchange in this need to be a security. Now, security is defined in SCRA and it doesn't and the definition of security is in SCRA, whatever it is covering. It was not uh, none of those things which were mentioned in the definition where uh, you know suiting the requirement of this unique instrument which need to be listed wherein the investor is neither expecting any kind of uh, intermediary return in the form of interest or dividend or anything or the maturity amount or the you know appreciation in their original investment at all so if we say that this is uh, zero coupon zero principal then what the what the word should be if we say this is zero coupon zero principal bond bond word if it is used then again the word bond comes with the inherent understanding of something is going to be come back to the investor in return because this is a bond and this is going to mature at some period of time so then we this was deliberated a lot and then decided that it should be called zero coupon zero principal in instrument instead of bond. So therefore, instead of bond, the word is used zero coupon, zero principal instrument, JETC, JETP. Zero coupon, of course, says no interest. Zero principal, of course, says that you're not going to get any money. When that hurdle was passed, then the entire structure was almost clear and then we worked together and we framed the regulation. And then everything came and notified by the government in July 2022. So it started with first 
government of india amending scra and including zero coupon zero principal instrument as one of the security so once security is defined then how that security may be issued how that security may be listed that is the framework which was given by the sebi in the form of amendment to icdr regulation and lodr regulations so this is the brief background how this entire structure came into the picture so once security is defined then how it is issued how it is issued, how the post listing monitoring will be done it was also decided where it should be listed then they should they, they stated that it should be a, a separate segment of stock exchanges like we presently we have main board what we call and then we have a separate segment which is uh, small and medium enterprises sme platform so this is a subset of stock exchange trading platform and this subset was required because of the reason that this is a very unique instrument and therefore need to be identified by the investors uniquely and therefore the concept of social stock exchange sse we call it in short has came to the picture so this is the background how this entire uh, concept of social stock exchange came into the picture with the objective even the second go to next slide please and sorry for troubling you so we have just uh, tried to understand what are the other jurisdictions where this kind of concept of raising fund through a transparent way of stock exchange are included and these are the, some of the countries where we have found uh, that uh, similar uh, kind of uh, concept are available and the next slide will give you a little comparison of how that has been done now again if i am if i am if i am giving money to an ngo in the form of buying an instrument which is which is not giving going to give me uh, interest not going to give me the principal and we are saying that is going to be listed then obvious question comes something getting listed uh, the basic purpose of listing is to trade so if it is getting listed it is uh, going to be traded but then if it is getting traded that somebody who buys the instrument is neither going to get any interest and not going to get any principal then why is he spending money in if at all he has to spend the money he will spend money directly giving that donation to the ngo so i am donating to the ngo but i am selling so i am getting my money back and my that contribution to ngo being transferred to somebody else that kind of issue would have been created and therefore in india the concept is that the security jc jp will not be traded and there is obvious reason for that so similarly next slide says that how the other jurisdictions are working mostly so there are trading are none in in brazil south africa uk canada and jamaica but there is a limited trading in singapore and Jam jamaica are on both the places so do, both kind of instrument may be there but mostly going by the logic going the concept the logic prevails that there should not be any trading allowed because once somebody buys and then they will come in the form of complaint that i bought and at that time in, i didn't uh, know that this is the instrument where i'm not going to get anything back so better to you know stop trading then if if we, if that instrument is not available for trading then why to list at all that is the question which will be answered subsequently so sir can you go to next slide please okay so working so uh, like uh, in the flow of evol evolution of social stock exchange we said that after after the speech of finance minister the working group was formed so what working group has given that they said that social stock exchange should be a separate segment of bse and nse and then they said that in order to help ngos there should be a capacity building fund a fund should be built now presently it is been award which should help these ngos to understand the process understand the concept and uh, encourage them educate them to come and get listed on the stock exchange platform get the money raised what are the eligibility criteria what are uh, the post uh, fund raising obligations all those things need to be told to the ngos because they they are basically mostly working the rural area don't know much about the listed domain securities law what will happen post listing and all so all they need to be educated so that they can use maximum of this uh, facility so therefore this capacity building was one of the concept which was recommended by the working group and then uh, gjo coupon gjo principal instrument was the that time it was not name was not fixed it was said there has to be an instrument we need to be listed after working group 
there was a technical group which got further into the detail saying that which all uh, NGOs should be allowed to be listed, right? Because we have so many NGOs registered. There has to be a check that which all uh, NGOs are able to advertise themselves to raise fund for their social cause. So for that purposes, those nitty gritties were provided by the technical group. They said there should be a the there should be the, the NGO should have a primacy of socialist uh, in, uh, in intent and that uh, what impact they have made out of the money that they have raised uh, from the public in the form of that zero coupon zero principal instrument. They should be able to demonstrate that there should be a social auditor who should audit the all the money which has been gone to these NGOs. And then this, uh, uh, there was a those who don't want to go through the instrument directly holding, they can invest through social venture fund and the ultimate object of that social venture fund will be for the social causes. So these were the means to finance the N NGOs through the stock exchange mechanism. That was the, the contribution of the expert group and technical group. With that basis, the ICDR and LODR regulation came. Now this slide I have prepared uh, with an intent to uh, to give everybody an understanding that how the entire structure work. So there is a, an institute uh, that is an not institute uh, NPOs which has this social uh, intent that can be of two category. One which don't uh, work for any monetary gain that is called not for profit or organizations. The name given for the social stock exchange purposes is NPOs, not for profit organization. And other part is FPE, for profit enterprise. For profit enterprise is any and other company which is running with the object of uh, earning profits, but they also have social cause is one of the uh, objectives. So presently in, in India, the structure is more focused on NPO side. These are pure NGOs and which are purely working with the intention of their social uh, uh, social impact projects. So these are NPOs. So they have to be registered with the stock exchange first. For that registration purposes, there are certain guidelines. They meet that guidelines. They got uh, registered with the stock exchange and then they can issue zero coupon zero principal instrument and then they can get listed. They can also contribute to a uh, social venture fund or uh, this thing, social impact fund and get listed. But that concept is still is not uh, started in India. Only issuance of zero coupon zero principal instrument and listing through issuance of zero coupon uh, zero principal instrument is what has been kicked off in India today. The other side is for profit enterprises, they can uh, raise fund through debt equity or whatever purposes and they can use that money for the NPO purposes. So right now it is uh, for the not for profit organization which has started in India. So we'll go to next slide, sir. This is broadly the structure that has happened. So two concept came. One concept is that if you are meeting the eligibility criteria which are covered in subsequent slide and more are in the form of a, a regulatory form which is available in the ICDR regulation and the circular issued by SEBI. The concept is twofold. One, not for profit organization meeting the basic conditions, checks and balances comes and get registered with the stock exchange. So they get a kind of recognition. Their name is published on the stock exchange website and they continue to be registered. They may choose not to get listed. Once they are registered, they also has this option of coming, raising fund on the stock exchange platform and get listed. And if they want to do so, the instrument that they will issue is ZC ZP. So NPOs on social stock exchange are of two categories. One which are only registered. There are conditions, checks, balances. You comply, you get registered those which are registered and then listed also. So this is dual status, registered and listed. And for listing, there is entire process of offer document, vetting, in principle, fund, uh, opening of the issue, closing of the issue and listing. Now for stock exchanges, when the NPOs uh, and we as an stock exchange are not expert in vetting the work or the structure 
or the culture of the NGOs. That was very well thought by SEBI and the expert group and all. So they said that since the stock exchange is expert in equity and debt listing and their trading and subsequent their functions related to that, they don't have that expertise of, you know, knowing whether what project they are going to raise fund and how much impact is going to have in the society. So they said that there has to be a governing council that then the provision came up that the every stock exchange which has social stock exchange platform, they should have a governing council of social stock exchange. And that governing council should comprise people from the different sector. And these people will be there to guide the policy procedures and vetting the documents and giving approval for the registration purposes and also for the listing purposes of social enterprises. So we as an exchange has also uh, formed a social stock exchange governing council and term of reference are to provide expertise toward development of social stock exchange, oversee the listing function and facilitate effective oversight on the education of the disclosures. Because like I said that we, we are listing the companies which are for profit and their equity shares, our debt instrument, our mutual funds. So this is basically business point of view. Social uh, stock exchange listing of NPOs is unique in itself and we don't have expertise that point in time. So therefore this governing council concept was introduced by SAP. That is very helpful. If I go to next slide, sir. So these are the basically uh, eligibility criteria for getting registered on the stock exchanges. So around fraud, uh, this uh, how many 16 broad areas has been identified by the regulator, which are provided in the form of regulations. And these are uh, these are basically related to the areas in which they are working. But there are certain specific exclusion if the NPOs are the this. Uh, trust are in that kind of business uh, activity, sorry, then they will not be eligible. And these are those with political or religious affiliations. They cannot raise fund and get listed on a stock exchange platform through issuance of JCGSP. NPOs, which are corporate foundation or professional or trade bodies and infra or housing kind of companies. These things are not allowed to get listed. So this is purely, purely for the upliftment of the society, for the social cause for the identify projects, no political, no religious, no other kind of uh, activities are allowed for the NPOs which are raising fund through stock exchange platform. That was a category mentioned. And then what are eligible are of course different areas in sanitation, education, upliftment of poverty and all those things that are eligible. This is a big list, so I'm just skipping that part. So you can go to next slide, sir. So, so if you are fitting in that category, which are allowed to get listed, then these are the eligibility criteria. Then there the, on the basic structure, what all that particular NGO should have. NPO, we call it not for profit organization. They must be a society trust or section 8 company under the Companies Act. They should have a track record of working for these projects for a, three years. They said they should have a valid registration under Income Tax Act and they should also have a valid registration under ATG. Now they should they, they, uh, they want a sizable NGOs to be raising fund through stock exchange and uh, registering. Therefore, they said they should have a annual spending of 50 lakh, lakh rupees in previous one year and they should have raised minimum 10 lakh rupees in previous financial years so that they become eligible to get registered in the stock exchange platform. Idea was that not every NGO should get registered because once somebody get registered on stock exchange, their name is displayed on the stock exchange website they can go and showcase themselves in a way that they are carrying additional value because their name is on the social uh, on the BSE website or other exchange website and therefore they can uh, go for the fundraising program when they're not that much of uh, you know well governed or mannered NGOs. So therefore these eligibility conditions have been prescribed that only sizable and genuine NGOs get registered and thereafter get listed on the stock exchange platform. We need to have a, these checks and balances which are there for even equity side also. Can you go to next slide, sir? So process of listing is the given on this slide that NPO 
they want to raise fund through Jesse JP or get registered. They have to send an email to our website, uh, email address which is given. Then the there is a dedicated team which looks into that emails and they respond with the requirements checklist and all. Then we scrutiny the document. Anything required will uh, will raise query and post that. They can uh, they get the certificate of registration and this registration is valid for one year and once registered they becomes eligible to get listed also uh, through issuance of Jetsi Jetpay. So again, I maybe I'm repeating like a broken record, but the NGOs that are coming to social stock exchange are divided in two categories. Those who meet all the eligibility condition and get registered and continue to remain registered only. Those who get registered and thereafter they can come and get listed also. So no, not necessary that every registered NPO will also eventually get listed. But well, this is 100% important that the every NPO that is to be listed is registered earlier. So we can go to next slide. <laughs> so this is broadly the criteria for raising fund through stock exchange platform. Minimum issue size 50 lakh rupees. Earlier it was 1 crore rupees, but then amendment came to uh, the regulation and it has been reduced. Subscription amount which was 2 lakh rupees earlier has been reduced to 10,000 10, rupees. Instrument need to be only in demand form. Therefore, NPO has to get into an agreement with the depositories. Minimum subscription is 75% and then if they are not going to meet that 75%, they should write in their offer document how to they are going to raise that money. Now the question is if it is not going to be get listed, traded of course, then what is the logic behind having a minimum subscription clause? Idea is that if somebody is saying that I have X project and I am raising say 10 crore rupees through issuance of JetC JetP for that particular project. That may be say drinking water facility in particular area, sanitation program in particular area, all those things. So you identify the project, you identify the cost, and based on that, you are going to raise fund by issuance of JetC JetP 10 crores, but you don't get that subscription, so you get only 5 crores. But your actual project is of 10 crore. So how you are going to complete that project? That is obvious question comes into the mind. Therefore, they say minimum 75% should come if there's a super sizable amount. And if you are not getting 75%, then you should say that even after not getting 75%, if you want to keep that money, say 55 lakhs out of 10, oh, sorry, 5 crores out of 10 crores, then you should tell the how you are going to meet that 5 crore balance requirement so that your entire requirement of 10 crore is met. So that is the justification that need to be given in the instrument. And then that JST JP will be deemed to be terminated, means discontinued to be listed if the object for which uh, has completed and tenure for which this is established is expired. So you can go to this next slide. Okay. This I think I have covered that uh, they have chapter 10A of ICDR, which is talking about the conditions for listing. And then uh, there's a provision under LODR regulation, which is talking about condition for post listing compliances. And then SEBI has issued various circulars, uh, which covers the operational part. For example, fundraising document, what all minimum content it should have that has been prescribed by SEBI. Once they get listed, they have to give annual disclosure and then uh, other kind of disclosure which is covered in subsequent slide. What should be the content of those disclosure that is prescribed by SEBI? So the, all those things, operational things, have been issued in the form of circular of September, then subsequent circular which are issued by SEBI. So can we go to next slide? Okay, so if you remember in the first slide, it was mentioned there should be a concept of social auditor. We should audit the utilization of the fund that has been raised by the uh, NPOs. But then over the year it was discussed that it is not actually audited. This is the assessment of the work that has been done by the, uh, the NGOs. So now recently that uh, amendment has came in LODR regulation because post listing compliances are covered in LODR regulations. And the, the concept of social auditor has been replaced with the concept of social impact assessment firm. And then those people are called social impact assessors. Presently in uh, this one, 
NISM in conducting is a certification course to become for somebody to become a social impact assessor and then then they can be associated with a social impact assessment firm and these guys can conduct the social impact assessment assessor work which is required for the annual impact report which is to be submitted by the uh, NGOs to the stock exchange. So concept of social auditor has been replaced with the concept of the social impact assessors. As of now, I think I and only ISI, ICAI has been uh, allowed. The other two uh, institutions, ICAI and CWA, yet to get that recognition to get that form registered of social assessment form. Now coming back to next is the post registration and post listing obligations. So the concept why stock exchange is that one there should be a transparent way of raising fund. This is the project for which I am raising fund. These are the pros and cons and checks and balances and the management and the previous finances. These things are covered in ICDR regulations. Once somebody get listed, continuous updation on how that money has been used, how that structure is working, how efficiently that NPO is working. Those provisions are covered in LODR regulations. These are called post listing and post registration compliances. All NGOs, like I said, that they are registered and they are uh, listed. They have to submit one annual disclosure. Then there is no quarterly disclosure for uh, this annual disclosure covered information, covers information about their organization, governance, financial disclosure that need to be given within 60 days of the end of the financial year. If they have raised fund, the NPO has raised fund, then they have to submit statement in respect of the utilization of fund raised within 45 days of end of the quarter. There are event based disclosure which are applicable to both registered and listed NPOs and that gives that is requiring requiring them to give information about any material event that is happening to them. Just like we have regulation 13 LODR regulation for uh, disclosure of material information to the stock exchange by listed entities. And then there is an annual impact report which is need to be assessed by the assessor which I was talking earlier that need to be given within the 90 days and this give information about the specific information about the impact that they have made in the society out of the fund that has been raised or otherwise also because they are registered NPOs with the with the stock exchange. So very minimal but very much required kind of post registration and disclosure requirement that have been prescribed in the in the regulation. We can go to next slide please. So what uh, so for uh, filing of these disclosures which are annual quarterly stock exchange has developed its online portal as, a, as of now stock exchange is considered is taking all the compliances. Let me share with you only through online portal all email comes submission all fax submission has been discontinued way back. We have developed a listing center, what we call, and uh, the listed entities have been given username, password, and OTP facility through which they can get logged into our system and they can file compliances to us. Same facility has now been extended to the listed uh, NGOs. We are extending it to registered NGOs also, but as of now, listed NGOs can file all the disclosures using that platform, which they get directly disseminated on the exchange, stock exchange website. And the informations of these uh, companies are available on the stock exchange platform. Just a scan. Sorry for that. So some statistics. As of now, we have two NPOs which has raised fund to the stock exchange platform and get got listed. One is Unnati and one is Vivekanand Foundation, I guess. Vivekanand, Vivekanand Foundation. As of now, we have 31 NPO that are registered with us. And these lists are available on our website group website of Social Stock Exchange. We are in the process uh, of the finalization of the offer document of two or three NPOs, which may get listed soon. So that will increase our number to, to five. Uh, and uh, we are in continuation touch with the other NPOs we want to get uh, listed and registered with us. Let's go to next slide, please. So the sometime back, the only challenge that was faced 
by the NPOs and stock exchanges in convincing the NGOs to get registered and raise fund and get listed on the stock exchange platform was that the fund which is invested by the investor in the um, buying the JC JP was not considered as an eligible contribution for regular uh, ATG under income tax act. Neither this was covered under the uh, this one uh, under the Companies Act. What do you call CSR activity? Eligible contribution to the CSR activities. So that was uh, followed up with the ministry, and recently they have uh, issued a letter which says that now the contribution which has been made in subscribing to zero coupon zero principal instrument is an eligible contribution to claim exemption under regulation eight, sorry section 80g of the income tax act so this is good news and which big booster i'm sure because this is recently came from the ministry and this is big booster because uh, that was something which was uh, you know holding up these ngos because somebody if they were saying that if i'm going to contribute same ngo otherwise I'm going to get JSC uh, ATG exemption certificate. But if I'm going to subscribe to JSC JP, I'm not going to get ATG certificate. Then why I should subscribe JSC JP? I will not directly get donation. But listing brings the transparency not only for the project for which the fund has been raised, but also for the projects which otherwise that NGO is uh, undertaking in the form of annual disclosures. So therefore, it is important that we should bring more and more NGOs on the listed domain so that they grow and with them we all grow. Uh, we can go to next slide, please, sir. Oh, that is all from my side. So I'm open for the question if anybody has any. Thank you. Devendu, sir, any questions? Sir, a uh, lot of questions has come, sir. Mm -hmm. Just to uh, tell you the first question, like you have presented, in the absence of ATG and CSR recognition, what benefit do the donors have for donating through SSE? Same question. So that I think I have answered that ATG recognition has came from ministry. It will be yes, in public sir. domain, so yeah. Okay. okay. CSR, uh, they are still pitching with the ministry. And uh, so that that is something which... Uh, uh, which is very much talked about in the last one year, maybe July 22, since when this notification has come, that without ATG and CSR, it was difficult to use, you know, uh, make it popular. But the thrust of the government was that more and more NGOs for the bigger projects of the uh, society, they should come on the listed domain. So therefore, the work has done and the fruit, fruit is out in the form of uh, ATG. CSR, I'm hopeful that we should also come maybe after the election period is over. OK, so another question is that uh, in the absence of merchant banker, what all due diligence are needed for listing? So when we are framing this regulation ICDR for listing of JC JP, so thought that whether there should be requirement of merchant banker. But then it was thought if you see in the minimum fund that they should rate to get listed is one crore. And if you involve merchant banker, a big portion of their fund raising goes to merchant bankers in the form of their fee. So therefore, uh, it was deliberately not included uh, in the ICDR regulation to mandate that all issuance of JTC, JTP of a document, there should be a requirement of merchant banker. But doesn't mean that there has to, there, there will be no checks and balances the minimum content and the requirement has been given, their accounts are audited, and they get advice of experts when they frame these documents and exchange is also looking into it. But since these are NGOs, see, we should not have so many conditions, checks and balances that NGOs say that, okay, I don't want to raise one through JTC, JTP, I'm fine with getting direct contribution. That was the concept. So therefore, um, merchant bankers are not there, that is correct, but there are sufficient checks and balances to ensure that the proper disclosures are made in the offer document. Just to help, help NGOs to save money on that front. Nothing else. Sir, another question has come, how the fundraising document should be prepared? Oh, so that is some practitioner's question. 
Fundraising documents, see, you should read SEBI circular of September 2022, I think. September 2022. Sorry, sorry. And that says that what all content need to be included in the fundraising document, which is similar to the, if you are coming with an IPO of equity, you need to prepare draft prospectus. While our minimum content should be there in the draft prospect has been prescribed, in, sorry, in the CBI CDR regulations. Similarly for in NPOs also, the minimum content has been prescribed by SEBI. And that goes in line with the preparation of draft of a document and in the same format it should be prepared. Plus, in order to help uh, the NGOs, we have uh, provided all the checklists that of the document that we need to check. We, we are going to check at the time of getting uh, the application with us issuance of in principle approval and providing the listing approval. So that also can be referred that will also help a lot of uh, things that need to be included in the offer document. And therefore, it's, it's made simple. Idea was to make it so simple that more and more NGOs are coming on the platform rather than making it so stringent that uh, they get demotivated in uh, discouraged, you know. Official subject and coming in the listed domain idea is. Do everything which is possible and of course at the time of having suitable checks and balances. To bring more and more NPOs in the listed domain. So minimum content has been provided. Sir, sir uh, once uh, it has been listed, what are the obligation of social entities? That is covered in my slide. That is this these obligations are uh, they have to give they have raised fund, they have to give quarterly the utilization of fund. They have to give annually their organizational structure and they have to give annually their impact assessment, which has to be assessed by the social uh, assessment form. Uh, and then if there are material event happening, which is hampering their project and fun functioning, they have to give that uh, information to stock exchange as event based information. I request everybody to visit BSC India website. On the top right hand corner in the drop down, you can select the group website of SSE Social Stock Exchange and that website post listing compliances calendar has also been uploaded so that they can also be referred for their ready reference because but mostly these are the four obligations four uh, post listing obligations which are there. Very, very minimal and very to the point only. So in case of this uh, social impact assessment report you were telling uh, do this uh, is mandatory for all the projects where funds are being raised through SSC or is it uh, uh, optional? I think your question is the person asking question is. Say I am uh, like I said, there has to be vintage of three years. There has to be sizable uh, NPO having say 50 lakh of spending 10 lakh of contribution received in the last one year. It means that this NGOs is working since years and now for a particular project it is raising fund, for example, 10 crore rupees. So that fund is raised, right? Now that get listed by issuance of JTC JP. Question is when I'm giving assessment, annual assessment, impact assessment report, whether I should give only for this project for which I have raised fund through stock exchange platform. At that time I should uh, give uh, that report for all the nine other projects which I was running when I was not in listed domain. I am having total say 10 projects. Nine projects where I am already which were already running for 10th project I raised fund through stock exchange platform. Now when time comes to submit annual assessment which projects I should include right that is the question. So basically it is involved. Uh, uh, it involves the the project for which you have raised the fund that need to be in detail. But of course because you are listed then that assessment is required to be done for all the projects because that gives the complete picture for the NGOs and that will help to create the image of the NGO for their further fundraising. So as of now if we go by the law as it is written. It is not mentioned that the impact report should be given only for the project for which they have raised one. So this is for the NGOs that that includes all the fund, all the projects that that particular NGO is running. So another question has come uh, whether India is, is applicable at the time of listing 
or after being listed indias is the accounting standard right so though i am not expert in that but my view is that there is no specific provision under icdr regulation or lodr regulation on the applicability of indias only because that particular ngo is coming for the listing so that goes purely by the rules which have been framed under income tax act or the other required statute this but there is no specific mention of indias mandatory to apply to ngos if they are coming for registration and listing from the cb point of view from the exchange point of view but from the other angles if that is that because this is already a running ngo new ngo cannot come and get to fund raise and listed so if that is applicable it goes by whatever law is applicable to them that is all i can say as of now there is no specific exclusion neither any inclusion from cb side on the applicability of indias for ngos okay thank you sir uh, sir another question is there is there any specific eligibility criteria for stock exchanges for npos to onboard on ssc's other than the prescribed by sebi mostly so these criteria are there on our website like again i said it is uploaded on our website this is mostly what is has been prescribed by sebi as of now like i am saying we all want to encourage npos to come and get listed so we have not provided any additional eligibility criteria this is purely what is prescribed by sebi though under uh, regulations power has been given to social stock exchanges to provide conditions for this registering for listing in addition to what sebi has prescribed as of now nothing additional has been prescribed by exchanges it is a question for uh, cost auditors icdr requires npos to establish primacy of social intent for onboarding on ssc's what are the yardsticks which can be used by cost auditors to determine the same sir i am supposed to answer that question yes yes sir <laughs> yardstick uh, for the I, from an exchange I'm, point of view see sir the basic requirement has been prescribed by sebi uh, in their uh, circular uh, that these are the things that need to be looked into now how to look into how to do the due diligence is mostly guided by the your uh, you know standard that you have prepared there is nothing specific which i can say as of now to the member that you should look into this because you considered it as another work which has been assigned to you and what due diligence you have to take that is required to be done sir uh, another uh, in the chat box another question has come whether practicing cmas can be social impact assessors they can pass the exam provided by nc uh, sorry nism the sebi institute but uh, Uh, i think the cma institute has not yet got a permission to you know to to uh, that their forms which are registered with you they can uh, do the social impact assessment work but that i think soon it is going to come for both it is not for C, uh, cma not neither for icsi it is going to come for both but before do that they have to pass the exam i would suggest first pass the exam of nc and i sorry i always goes on saying ncf nism sir another question has come like msme platform for ap will there be any platform for smaller npos in the future i don't think so but the future nobody can you know confirm but i don't think because this is a smaller platform only see i told you how much is the subscription now is 10000 rupees and minimum issue size is 1 crore rupees <laughs> 50 lakh rupees from 1 crore it has reduced to 50 lakh rupees now 10 10 lakh rupees 5 lakh rupees for which uh, nobody will come to listing when there is a cost involved there are obligation involved so as of now i don't think it has recently been you know uh, amended and rationalized and 1 crore the issue size has been reduced to 50 lakh rupees i am not so sure whether it will be reduced to 25 lakh rupees or for any other this thing uh, further down see what so let's discuss 
what is the SME? SME as compared to main board. SMEs are not supposed to get processed by the SEBI. Their offer document don't get processed by the SEBI. It is purely stock exchange approval. That is one uh, relaxation which has been granted. Corporate governance provisions are not applicable under LODR regulation. That is another relaxation which has been granted. And instead of quarterly, they have to submit half yearly results and shareholding pattern. These are the exemption that has been granted. And they said that the size should be post listing. This thing should be, I think, 25 crores. Till that amount, they can be on the SME platform. And we will be below 10 crores. If they are post issue capital, they, they mandatory should come on the stock exchange platform. So that is 10 crore. Here it is only 50, 50 lakh rupees. So in my view, I don't think that uh, in very recent time it has going to be reduced further. And if we have to introduce a concept like, like SME, what relaxation will provide? There is already everything relaxed. Only four disclosure are which are required to be given. So answer is no. So another question is that uh, do NPOs has to issue ZC, ZP for each and every project separately? Of course, so. It's like this. The company get listed through an IPO. They issue the DRHP and they say that this fund I'm going to use for X project. Then they have another project for the which there is uh, they need fund. Then they will come with another public issue which is called follow on public issue FPO. When they issue FPO, uh, they come with an FPO, they get the money, they issue equity shares. And that equity shares get added to their existing ISN. Similarly, for ZC, ZP, it's a project specific finance. Whenever somebody is issuing ZC, ZP, their offer document has to specifically provide for which project they are going to issue ZC, ZP. They are going to take another project. They can again issue ZC, ZP. No problem with that. Sir, uh, I think. Uh, yeah, so Agar separately, but if they want to ask whether I have to issue separately at the same time, say I am going to start three projects, whether I have to come with the three offering separate offering. My answer in my understanding is that that is not what it should be done. You can provide for my project one. I am raising 10 crore for project two. I am raising two crore for project three. I am raising three crore, so total I am uh, raising 15 crore. So you can come with an uh, issue uh, of ZC ZP of 15 crores. That way. If that is I the think, question. I think that uh, we have uh, you have answered all the questions which were asked by your uh, CMA, CMAs and others. And I request, uh, I thank wholeheartedly, sir, for uh, sharing your valuable time today. And to give a formal vote of thanks, I request CMA Dr. Aditi Dasgupta, who is joint director and who is a main contributor of our uh, journal and also various other issues. Uh, Madam, please uh, unmute yourself and give a formal vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sri Ashok Kumar Singh, uh, for such uh, an interesting uh, presentation. Thank you, sir, for such. Uh, um, an exhaustive presentation. I would like to thank our president, CMA Ashwinji Dalwadi, sir, our vice president, uh, Sri CMA BB Nayak, sir, our chairman, CMA Dr. Ashish B. Thatti, sir, and uh, the whole SSB team members for the support. Our HOD, uh, CMA Dibindu Roy, sir, additional director uh, for uh, his support and encouragement. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, with this, we are coming to an end of today's wonderful session. I thank and I hope uh, on 24th also we would be having our ninth webinar of this Vasudeva Kutumbam series and uh, hope uh, everybody will join in this session. So with this, we are closing today's session. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.